And hello and welcome to Paper of the Week. My name is not Matthew Legg, it's Steve Eddy, because Matt's uh, away at the moment, so I'm doing Paper of the Week. And this is a new paper uh, released just this year, late this year, on idiopathic hyperprolactinemia. Now, you might think I just made that up, if you haven't heard that before. Idiopathic means that they don't know where it comes from. And hyperprolactinemia, as the name suggests, means hyper, too much, prolactin, in the blood, emia. So hyperprolactinemia, too much prolactin in the blood. Now, the first million dollar question is, what is prolactin? Well, it is a hormone that, as the name suggests, increases lactation of the breast in women, and there's prolactin in men as well. So this is a, a hormone that's naturally found in the body. But what we're talking about here is when you've got too much prolactin in the blood, and that can cause problems. And in this case, they're talking about it, how it's presenting as polycystic ovarian syndrome. And you might go, hang on, I've heard of that. That's right, it occurs in about up to 18% of women. So it's quite a common disease. So this is um, sort of a little two-part paper, and it talks about, well, what is hyperprolactinemia, and well, how does it affect, and how does it relate to um, um, PCOS, or polycystic ovarian syndrome? Now, just, just keeping in mind, prolactin is a hormone secreted from a gland in your brain called the anterior pituitary gland, the back of the pituitary gland. So it's a natural um, hormone, and it's it, it's actually regulated by the hormone estradiol. So as estradiol goes up, so does prolactin typically. And you might think, well, that's good. And when you're pregnant, of course, estradiol goes up, so does prolactin. And prolactin peaks when you're giving birth, so you actually make milk, so you can feed your baby. That's the idea of it. Now, the problem with too much prolactin in the blood is that it can, can cause in women quite severe depression, anxiety, and it can cause PMS, PMDD, which is poly... Um, what is it? it piece, uh, no, it's premenstrual um, dysphoric disorder. That's quite a bad one. It also can cause amenorrhea or infertility. It's associated also with hypothyroidism or low thyroid function, insulin resistance, and in men it can cause impotence, which is bad, obviously, and can cause um, autoimmunity too. Um, so it's quite bad too. Now it's normally treated by boosting another chemical in the brain called dopamine. Now, dopamine can be boosted with herbs such as Vitex. And that's, in fact, how Vitex works in the body, the herb Vitex or chase tree. It increases dopamine, suppresses prolactin, and you feel better. And that, by that intense, of course, also increases progesterone. Um, so, so the drug is, is, is cavabolene. That's a drug that boosts dopamine level in the brain. And that's a, that's a great drug. So that, that's cabagolene, and that's a dopaminergic drug. So that's how we normally treat it medically. So this is what it is. And how it, how it affects polycystic ovarian syndrome is high levels of prolactin can also increase androgens in women. And this paper talks about the, uh, a, a case study where two twins were tested to find, well, they've got PCOS, and they didn't know why. Because they were, you know, they had, they had polycystic ovarian syndrome. They were overweight. But why? And it's because these twins had too much prolactin, just genetically. They had too much prolactin uh, being produced. And this is where the term idiopathic comes from, because they didn't know what caused it. They weren't pregnant. They, weren't, you know, they didn't have a tumor on their pituitary, which is another common cause. And so um, this, this is a paper showing that, that another cause of polycystic ovarian syndrome could be high prolactin. High prolactin can also cause you know, anxiety, depression and all these sorts of things and uh, the, the reason why I'm highlighting this is because a lot of people who have anxiety and depression will go and see a counsellor and rightly so but you can't counsel your prolactin levels back down you need to take drugs or Vitex to, to, to get the prolactin levels back down and this is when you have an organic cause to a psychological condition too so if you have a chemical that's wrong in the body it can't be corrected by counselling so you need to rule out these sorts of uh, things going in the body, like high prolactin. So please be aware of these sort, this, this sort of um, hormone in the body. And if you have some of those symptoms that I've, I've talked about, then, of course, get your prolactin levels checked. It's just a simple blood test. You can measure it. It should be below 20. Um, it's not affected by food, so it doesn't have to be a fasting level of prolactin. You, you can test it any time of the day. And you can just ask your doctor as part of a routine screening. If you're getting a lot of PMS or you're low thyroid 
or you've got you know estrogen dominance high prolactin consider it and that's something that we've got to look at um, so be aware of that and enjoy your day everybody and that was paper of the week